ومن أحسن قولا ممن دعا إلى الله وعمل صالحا وقال إنني من المسلمين First and foremost, Jazakallah khairan to the brothers that companion Dawah for the invitation. Wallah, it's a blessing to be in Seattle. You know, I've never ever been to America before, so Wallah, it's a, it's a pleasant feeling to come to a city that, you know, very, very far away from home, yet to see so many Muslims. So Wallah, Jazakallah khairan to the brothers that companion Dawah. Jazakallah khairan to Abu for the poetry and Sheikh Muhammad. Jazakallah khairan. Ask Allah to bless this whole community. Amen. Um, on the topic of Muslim identity, I chose this well, when, when, when Hassan asked me what topic do I recommend, I recommended the topic Muslim identity. Because as a youth, as someone growing up in my teenage years, this was a topic that I struggled with the most. I struggled with knowing what does it mean to be a Muslim. Does it mean someone simply who prays five times a day? Does it mean one who simply says with his lips that he believes in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as his prophet and Allah as his, as his Lord? And really it's a dilemma that most of the youth and the teenagers face. They don't know exactly what it means to be a Muslim. And unfortunately, many people do not know this about me, but in my teenage years, even to my first year of university, I had a dilemma where I would be a part-time Muslim. And unfortunately, many of us fall into the same trap today. We would try to pray our Salat, but at the same time, we would fall into the traps of music, entertainment, movies, and haram, many, many, many sins that we choose to refrain from today. But nevertheless, what was most important about me was I entered into university to do a media degree. And when I entered into the university to choose this as my degree, as my occupation, now, you might find this funny, but this is exactly what happened on my first day of university. I walked into my class for media, and the teacher began asking everyone to stand up and say why they are here and why they chose to do a media degree. So everyone got up and said why they're doing media and their aspirations, etc, etc, until he came to me. And he says, Kamal, why did you choose to do a media degree? And I am not lying. This is 100% the truth. I said to him, sir, I'm doing a media degree so I can make music videos for Lil Wayne. <laughs> and you guys think that's funny, but it is no word of a lie. That's exactly what I wanted to do. Unfortunately, at this age, I had a massive dilemma of not knowing what it meant to be a Muslim. You think it's okay to just pray and believe in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa but your whole culture, the whole lifestyle you are living, it's based on who as your role models. The rappers, the celebrities, the movie stars. We say Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is our role model and our guide, but far from it it was far from it to the point that I would be so obsessed with the entire music industry that I would dream of just making music videos every day I used to go on one website one of the most famous hip hop websites in the world I used to be on this website every single day looking at the latest music videos the latest hip hop tracks and albums just hoping that one day I could aspire to eventually make a music video that would go on this website to direct one. I never wanted to be a rapper or anything, but I wanted to direct one. And that was my long dream and ambition. And I used to really, really get my skills together. I used to practice making videos, practice with audio and all these different skills I had attained within the scope of a year. But subhanAllah, the way Allah plans and plots with our lives, it is truly a miracle. In the most mysterious of ways, Allah drags us towards Him, brings us towards Him in ways we could never imagine. All along while I was living this facade, living this dream, this ambition, I had one friend. And many of you guys might have that same friend today. 
You know that one friend that you have that always tells you to come to the masjid but you never listen to him? That one friend that sends you the annoying text message, brother, there's an event tonight, there's a talk next week, this, that, this, that, come along, come along, join the brotherhood, etc., etc. That one friend always stuck by my side, but I never used to listen to him. I never used to care, like, I never used to accompany, maybe once a month, and once every two months, until eventually he dragged me to my local MSA and he said, this guy knows how to make videos, use him. So subhanAllah, slowly but surely, I got introduced to my MSA. The MSA is a Muslim Students Association. I'm sure you guys have them here. And they said, you know what, Kamal, we want you to make us videos. And I was like, you know what, I'm good at it. I know how to make videos. I might as well do it for you. Even though it wasn't my dream, it wasn't my ambition because I had my dreams and goals elsewhere. But nevertheless, I used to do it to the point they actually put me into their, into their shura, which was like a council for the actual MSA. And they treated me with so much respect, but little did they know that I was a, I was a bit of a hypocrite. Because as much as I was helping them with their Islamic stuff, I still wanted to do the haram. I still was dreaming of using my media degree for something which was very, very negative. And it was very, very funny how Allah slowly, slowly forced me to change. I remember one incident and I wanted to share this with you because I think many of you might relate to it. I used to have the bad habit of driving around campus, the university, just pumping up the worst rap music ever. Think of the worst rappers. You know the rappers that make haram music look halal? Listen to. And I would just drive around with the worst of music blasting from my windows. But the second you pull up next to the university musalla, what do you do? Slowly turn the music back down. And then you get your dhikr out. Astaghfirullah, 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 astaghfirullah. And then you go. You drive fast. Turn it back up. Wind your windows down and keep going. And this is a bit of a hypocrite and Allah doesn't like the hypocrites. But this is how I used to live. Until one day I done that exact same thing. Drove up, stopped at the red light. And put the music back up, leaning back, just listening to the music, bobbing my head, bobbing my head, bobbing my head, outside the university, waiting for it to turn green. And then a car pulls up right next to me. But I couldn't care less. Who cares? You know, it's just, you know, they'll probably like my music too. Probably not, but you nevertheless. Bobbing, bobbing, bobbing. And subhanAllah, I just see like someone staring at me. So I turn around and my jaw drops. Out of the 10,000 people we have on campus, it was the president of the Muslim Students Association. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, turn that back down. Salaamu Alaikum, brother. Yes. Uh, how's Islamic Awareness Week? Uh, and subhanAllah, it was just like Allah is telling you, get your act together, Kamal. Like, stop wasting your time. It's, it's, it's true. This is how Allah like, he humiliates us so abruptly, so openly, just to let you know, come back. Come back. Stop wasting your time. And Allah does these things to teach us this very profound lesson. So that was one of the biggest wake-up calls of my life. That was the one, one of the biggest wake-up calls from, from Allah to say, come back to me, come back to me, stop wasting your time. And then I slowly gave up music and the dream of one day becoming, you know, the next Little Wayne music director slowly died away. And alhamdulillah, I had one, the friend that I was talking about, I became very close to him. To the point that he convinced me to go to Hajj that year. So I slowly, I gave up music, I gave up this dream, and I decided to go to Hajj. And Allah is the one that invites us, and we thank Allah first and foremost. But nevertheless, I went to Hajj and on the plane of Arafat, you know, they say that you should ask Allah to forgive you for everything and you turn a new page. Some of the scholars say that it's haram to leave Arafat thinking that Allah hasn't forgiven you. Rather, you should think that you are as a newborn baby. So you ask Allah to forgive you, forgive you, forgive you, forgive you, forgive you. But at the same time, you ask Allah for whatever you want. So amongst all the other du'a that I had made, I had a very special du'a. And I had written them down all on my phone so I would not forget them. And this du'a is still written on my phone today back at home. 
I said to Allah, I said, Ya Allah, you've taught me how to make videos, you've given me all these skills, you've taught me how to, you know, even use audio and music, etc. I just want to use it for you. I'm sick of this haram, I don't want to do music videos anymore, I just want to use these skills in your path. I said, Ya Allah, please, just in your path. I made that dua, went back to Australia, and didn't think much of it. Until about two weeks after I had arrived in Australia, I'm sitting back in class in a lecture theater, no different to this one, and the lecturer was at the podium just speaking about social media because that's my degree. And he was saying, whoever you are, wherever you're from, contribute to the media. Let the people know your story. Let the people know who you are. Give whatever you can to teach the world more about yourself. And I was sitting there in the back of the theater and read it. I sit at the back, I never pay attention, but that just boom, it was like a light bulb in my head. And I said, you know what? I think this is a sign from the dua that I had made. So I jumped onto YouTube and I said to myself, I want to see how well a Muslim is doing on YouTube. How strong is their presence on online media on YouTube? So I wrote the word religion into the YouTube search bar. I said, 100% I'm at least going to see one Islamic video after writing the word religion. 100% I'm going to see this video or that video or at least, you know, three videos about who is Muhammad Wasallam or who is, you know, what is the Quran, who is Allah, etc, etc. And to my surprise, there wasn't a single Islamic video after searching the word religion on the front page of YouTube. Rather, there was a Christian video by a Christian boy, roughly my age, who had made a poem about Jesus about three days ago while I was searching. And he was getting so many views. And that really, really cut me up as I was sitting in the back of the lecture theater. I was like, subhanAllah, out of all people to, to preach religion, we have someone speaking about Jesus, when as Muslims we have more right to speak about Jesus than he does. So I said to myself, this is my first task. So I literally ran out of the lecture theater, went straight to the university musalla, and started to write. And alhamdulillah, the information's already there. You know, Ibn Qayyim already has made a poem about Jesus. You don't have to look that far. So I got that poem, I translated it, and released the English poem responding to this about Jesus within one or two days. And subhanAllah, 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 within one day, it got over 100,000 views. And I said, this is all, of, all from Allah. 100% Allah has blessed me after I made the dua about a month ago. But something even more special happened. Do you guys remember at the start of the lecture when I said that I used to dream of making a music video for this website about hip hop? That was my dream, that was my ambition, that was my goal. To one day direct a music video that will go on this hip hop website where all the rappers are featured. And subhanAllah, one day after I put up my poem, I get, a, I get a call from my friend. They call me up, they say, come out. They say, go on Worldstar. That's the name of the website. If you guys know what it is, hide yourselves now. <laughs> so they go, she, go, go on Worldstar. I'm like, well, what's on? I said, go on Worldstar. So I went on to Worldstar, and there was my video on the front page. And my jaw just dropped. I was like, like literally, it was that feeling like, subhanAllah, how Allah does things. They say there's a hadith that says, whatever you give up for the sake of Allah, Allah will replace it with something that's better. And I could not see a better, more direct example than that. I was dreaming of, of spreading corruption on this platform, and Allah allowed me to spread truth on this platform. And, it ha and they never ever allow Islamic videos on that website. It was like one of the first ever Islamic videos on that website. And Alhamdulillah, they even put more of my videos still to this day on that website. And it's proof.
proof. Whatever you give up for Allah, Allah will replace it. Allah says in, in Surah Al-Talaq, He says, وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهِ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا Whoever fears Allah, He will provide for him a way. And it really cuts me up. When I see people today, when I see youth today, they say, brother, come on, I want to do this, I want to do that. And they know it's haram. They know, like they say, oh, I want to I get into the music industry. I go, why? I go, to make love songs? They go, yeah. I go, come on, brother. You know it's not right. You're going like, to play with a little girl's feelings. You're going to play with a little boy's heart. For what? You're going to spread corruption. And they're like, yeah, but you know, this is the way. I said, brother, you fear Allah, He will provide for you a way, He will provide for you an opening from ways you, you never would have expected. And at the same time, if you try to take advantage of Allah and think that Allah cannot see you, you are treading the past for humiliation. Abu bin Khattab radiallahu anh, he says, Allah has honored us in Islam if we try to seek honor anywhere else. Meaning that in a way that contradicts our Islamic values, Allah will humiliate us. It's a fact. It's a scary. It's a scary thought. You know, where are you trying to run away to? For ayna as Allah says in the Quran, where would you try to escape? You can't go anywhere else. So why not seek honor through Islam and not through anywhere else? Because if you try to trespass the rules of Allah, He will catch you. And this is a fact, you know, we don't have to hide away from it. I remember uh, one funny story, I, I think I'll, I'll leave with this funny story before we get into the poetry. But just to show you that you can't hide from Allah. And hopefully this, this will sit in your hearts the next time you think of doing something bad, inshallah. About five years ago, I went into a clothes store to buy Eid clothes or something. Shirt, t-shirt, jeans, shorts, etc. And I was with my sister. I paid for the clothes, walked out. My sister looks at me. She goes, Kamal, you know, that was pretty cheap. I go, yeah, yeah, discount, discount. She goes, no, not discount, look at the receipt. I looked at the receipt, and they had forgotten to charge me for a $40 bill. So I go, mm, suck it, his fault, you know. It's a, it's a big warehouse store anyway. It's, it was like Macy's or something. It's like massive. I go, you know, they can deal with $40. And I literally just walked out and I didn't think much of it. We went, I had lunch with my sister at the food court and then I went out to cut my hair. After we finished having lunch, we walked off. I go, Rana, pass my wallet. That's her name. Pass my wallet. She goes, I don't have your wallet. I go, it's not with me. Where's my wallet? She goes, it's probably back at the food court. This is like literally half an hour after we had walked out of the, the store. Ran back to the food court, my wallet's not there. We went to the security, my wallet's not there. We went to center management, my wallet's not there. We went everywhere for an hour and a half searching and we couldn't find my wallet until I found my wallet with a, with a cleaner. I ran up to him, I go, hey, that's my wallet. Open the wallet, I had $80 in there. Gone. This was in like half, within half an hour. Within half an hour of, of, of just like walking out of a store, taking a $40 bill, Allah took $40 from me and took the $40 back. $80, gone, within a second. Where are you trying to run to? You cannot run from Allah. Um, what, the funniest story, one of my friend's friends, I, I don't want to associate myself to him because he done something very bad. <laughs> but nevertheless, he has a... You know, in, in Australia, they have something called the TAB. It's like gambling. He put like $100 on something. He won $200. So he parked his car, ran, grabbed his $200 winnings, came back to his car, $200 fine just waiting for him right there. <laughs> this is a true story. These things happen. Where are you trying to run to? Allah has given us Islam. Allah has honored us. Where are you trying to run to? Honestly. So I just wanted to leave you with that. Your, mis your Muslim identity, taqwa, fear Allah, know Allah, follow the rules of Allah, and Allah will honor us. And you don't have to be a poet, you don't have to be a da'i, you could be anyone, Allah will honor you, honestly. 
Don't ever think for a second that my Muslim identity, oh, it's limited because I haven't got that many skills, I haven't got that many great, you know, talents. You could have something very, very, just your, your personality would be enough for you to contribute as a Muslim person. To really develop your Muslim identity and make you someone really, really great, inshallah. So I'll leave you with that, inshallah. And then um, we'll do...